Hi, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and I'm going to go over some character UI stuff, and we're going to do it as if the character is talking um, for this example. So uh, without further ado, let's jump into it. We have a cube here just stretched out to these parameters. We have a capsule here just to pretend like he's our character. I'm going to put him, uh, zero him out on the X and Z so he's in the center of the camera. So I'm going to create a couple scripts. The first script I'm going to call character. Sorry about that. I've been working with my buddy Mike on Bearded Man Studio stuff, so we're chatting uh, quite a bit about it. Um, so I'm going to make one called character, and I'm going to drop that onto the capsule. And then I'm going to create, no, not a new GUI skin. I'm going to create another C Sharp file. I'm going to just kind of call this UI underscore demo. I'm going to drag that onto the main camera. So now my character has a, a script attached and my main camera has a script attached. So first I will open up character. Uh, close without saving that. So here inside of character, I'm going to create a, a string. So I'm going to call it public string my words is equal to string dot empty so that's pretty straightforward and let's create a public void um, git words function um, even though we don't really need to do this I'm just going to make a function for those of you out there who want to learn more about calling functions from other scripts uh, because I can directly access this variable from the other script because it is public. But I'm going to make a function called get words. I'm going to pass, I'm going to return, actually this void needs to be a string because I'm returning something. I'm going to return my words. So now that I'm going to return my words from this character, inside of the UI demo, just go back and double click it open. Instead of the UI demo, we need another private function called onGUI. And this is where we're going to be doing our rendering of our text from our player. So um, inside of here, we inside of our UI demo, sorry, uh, we will need to also create a state for when to show text and when not to. So we can create a state up here at the top, say uh, we'll make it a private uh, displaying, uh, sorry, let's make it bool displaying text is equal to false. And then down here inside of the on GUI, so I got a lot of things popping up on my screen, but uh, here on the on GUI we're going to say if displaying text this means if this is true then we're going to execute this block as you may know so inside of this block we need to get the character's words what we're going to do now is i'm going to i'm going to do some stuff in a little bit crazy ways at times because it teaches more that way so in this example i'm going to get the object i click on store it into a variable and call its script instead of the display text whenever I click on it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a private game object, call it click, click it is equal to null. And now inside of our update, we're going to see if we click on a player um, to get his text. So if input dot get mouse button down, and zero is the left button. So if we press the left button, then we are going to need to do a rate cast from the screen and see if we hit the character. So we're going to create a, a variable called uh, ray cast hit, named hit. Then we're going to do physics dot ray cast. We're going to pass in a ray which is going to uh, be input dot oh not input sorry we're gonna do camera with a capital C main camera dot screen to point array and then pass in our input dot mouse position and then we're gonna out hit 
So we're going to output the hit information. Um, and we're going to make this an if statement. So if physics raycast hit out hit, then we are going to say if clicked, well not clicked, sorry, if hit.collider.gameobject.get component, we're going to get character is not equal to null. That means that there is a character script attached to whatever we just hit by clicking. So if there is a character script attached, it is a character. So if so, then clicked is equal to hit.collider.gameobject. And if it's not a character else, then we say clicked is equal to null. And then down here on the if statement for the recast, we're, all gonna, we're also going to say else clicked is equal to null. Just because whenever we click off, we want the, the text to stop displaying. So in this case, we can actually remove this boolean that we say display text. We can take this clicked and we can say if clicked is not equal to null. So now if we're clicked on anything, it'll display this text. So if we're clicked on something, we want to actually display a label. And I'm just going to create a simple label. I'm going to say GUI.label uh, new rect. Um, 15, 15, uh, 100, uh, 25. And we're going to, as the string we're going to pass in, we're going to say clicked dot get component character dot get words. Remember that function we made, get words? It's going to return a string and that's going to be what's displayed. Now there is a ton of UI stuff that can go in. Um, I may have to make a few videos to make up for it, um, but for this one, I just want to get the purpose of clicking on something to display text that it has stored in itself. So th th I'm statically putting in a rect here, but you may want to put in a dynamic rect, which I'll go over later, like I said. There's just so much inside of GUI um, to go over, just tons of stuff with layouts and buttons textures and all kinds of crazy stuff so in this one I'm just going to go over the interactivity part and we may go deeper into UI later so this will display something on 15 on the X 15 on the Y with a width of 100 and a height of 25 and it's going to display the text of that character so let's go ahead and go back to our editor click on our character and inside of my words let's type in hello Danielle I always say Danielle, that's my girlfriend, and I love her. We've been together for ever, like six plus years. So uh, my hello world is hello Danielle. So that is why that is, if you have any questions why. So let's add hello Danielle to that, um, and let's hit play. Now if I click on the character here, you see hello Danielle is displayed in the top left. And if I click off, it goes away. If I click on, it goes on. If I click off, it goes away. So let me explain why I did this in this modular way. If I duplicate this guy all over the place, right? He, I have a bunch of him. So this guy is going to say, yo, dog. This guy is going to say, I'm lefty. I'm not very good with, with saying stuff. Uh, this guy's gonna say, eh, eh, head. And this guy's going to say, boo, it's almost Halloween. Yes, I can't spell. Let's put two E's in. I don't care. Alright, so now let's hit play. Now, if I click on the various guys, you can say, I'm lefty. Eh, head. Boo, it's almost Halloween. See how that wraps around? Let's actually fix that while we're still here and we got some time left. Let's change this 100 to 200. And now if we hit play, click on him, now it's nice and uh, not wrapped. So boo, it's almost Halloween, and yo dog, and of course, hello Daniel. So that is how we can get this interactivity going on with clicking on the actual players. So just because... Um, 
we did it this way doesn't mean there's a thousand there's this is the only way but there's a thousand ways to do this I just want to go over the click interaction so uh, I'm also gonna have to go over proximity but I don't know how long this video has been so I will make a second video sorry about that noise I'll make a second video on getting um, the text from characters based on the proximity of the camera versus the players or something like that so that's how you get some text on the screen based off of interaction with things so until next time that's it